All right, everybody, welcome. Uh, my name is Rod Soto, and uh, I'm your host today uh, for this meeting uh, of Pacific Hackers. Uh, today, we're going to have Asta Sani. Uh, we're very thankful that she, she's here today to present uh, about cyber threat hunting skills. Uh, you probably have seen my browser. This is our meetup page, uh, which is uh, meetup.com forward slash Pacific Hackers. We meet uh, every month. And we are a uh, part of a, a, a bigger group, which is uh, we put it under the, the umbrella of what we call the percent 27. The percent 27 is uh, was born in Miami with Hack Miami. So uh, Hack Miami is, is, is a, 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 a sister group uh, at, uh, located in Florida, uh, which is also a meetup, the meetup.com forward slash Hack Miami. Uh, and uh, uh, we try to meet every month. And every month, uh, we try to bring new, um, uh, basically, presentations that can help our members. Uh, we're an open group. Everybody is welcome. Um, we uh, uh, basically try to help those who are trying to break into cybersecurity. And we have people that uh, have been in the industry for a while and try to help those who are basically trying to break cybersecurity. We have all kinds of... Uh, 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 professionals uh, from all school hackers, uh, uh, infosec people, um, people at the academia. We got we got a, a, a very good diverse group, and 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 that makes it uh, pretty interesting. Uh, we have a lot of resources. If you need help finding a job, we have a job channel. We have a training channel. We have a tool channel. We have a coding channel. Uh, we have a lot of resources for those who are trying to uh, seek help or progress in their careers. Um, I invite you to join us. We, we have a Discord channel and, and a Slack channel. Uh, I am going to post those links. Uh, uh, and then mingle uh, and don't be afraid to ask uh, any questions. Don't, don't be afraid to, to um, uh, try to reach out to somebody. Uh, we, uh, we try to break. Uh, that uh, old school thing of, of being clickish and 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 not being very welcoming. We 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 actually try to to be open to everybody. Uh, and and those who have been in our group know that, we, that there's a reason why I choose uh, uh, public and open libraries because you can come if you like it. Great, stay. If you don't, then that's fine. No, you're there's no catch here. There's no. We're not going to charge you anything. There's not like an Herbalife scam. Uh, every, everything is free here, but it's going to cost you some time. It's your time, uh, an investment. If you want, if you really want to break into uh, uh, the industry, and and you will meet some very interesting people, all kinds of people. So I invite you uh, to try this out, and uh, uh, we always look forward to expand the community. Uh, I, I believe we have a lot of. Uh, People from New York, uh, we actually been, uh, we were very active in New York. We had a garden at one point, um, but it sort of died off. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we we used to participate a lot in uh, Hope um, when it was in uh, uh, Hotel Pennsylvania. I actually brought a capture of the flag uh, once, I think it was in Hope 2012. And that was uh, the longest capture of the flag I ever, I ever done. It was a full 24 hour. Uh, and it was pretty uh, me going out and uh, trying to find uh, White Castle in Manhattan at 2, 3 a.m. And those guys were still, it was still hitting those uh, boxes and it was pretty exciting. And that was, that was an amazing call. And uh, hopefully one day we'll do it again. So uh, I will soon post the, uh, the link for you guys for Discord and Slack. And like I said today, today we're going to have uh, Asta Sunny, and um, she is in New York, and she is an instructor at Iron School. And today, she's going to be speaking about um, uh, cyber threat hunting skills. Um, and uh, she's been in the industry for over five years. Uh, worked in uh, identity access management, vulnerability management, and SIM. Uh, so, Asta, if you are ready to go, uh, now I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to set you as a presenter, 
and uh, we should be able to start. Thank you so much, Rod, for the lovely introduction. So, uh, hold, on. hold on, let me send you as a presenter. Sure. Let's see. Uh, so you are. Roll to do. There you go. Take it away. Oh, thank you so much. So let me share the presentation. So let me know if everybody sees it. Yes, I can see it. It's cool. Okay. Okay. So hi everyone. This is Asa. Today we are going to talk about threat hunting and we'll be focusing on one specific methodology in threat hunting which is known as OODA loop. So before starting, uh, let me give you a brief introduction about myself. I'm currently a lead instructor in Flatiron School. So I teach students SIM, which is security information and event management and the basics and foundations of cyber threat hunting. I'm an active member of OWASP NYC. I, uh, I'm part of a community known as InfoSec Girls, which is globally headed by Vandana Verma. So for the New York chapter, I am the lead here with Zoe Pritaman, and I have started a small initiative, educational initiative known as Cyber Preserve, where uh, what I do is like uh, I provide a learning platform to individuals who want to transition their career into cyber. And sometimes things happen like this, like we are already into cyber. We are touching some part of cyber, but we are not aware about it. So basically, I provide a small foundational course about like from the learning of my master's program in information security management. So I've created a foundational course and some professionals based on invitation whenever I start the mentorship program in certain intervals. They join me through this uh, mentorship program and through that they learn some of the foundations about the cybersecurity area and we connect the dots. So basically the educational program and initiative is mostly about connecting the dots among individuals about cybersecurity so that they are not only learning skills about cyber, but they are also learning that somehow somewhere in their career at some point they have touched cyber. So this is it about my introduction. So let me move forward about today's concept. So today, first of all, before discussing about OODA loop, we are going to discuss about what is threat hunting, okay? Then what are some of the requirements? We are going to discuss about a very important term in threat hunting, which is known as dwell time. And then we will, like, eventually we'll uh, move into the direction of OODA loop. So, uh, before moving forward, I will be discussing all these topics and once I'm done with the session, I'm open for any questions you have. So, once I complete the session, I'll be happy to take your doubts. So, let's start. So, basically, what's threat hunting? So, in cyber, whenever we are actually identifying threats, so basically what we are doing is we are trying to product data. Okay. And Cyber comes from a super set of information security. So actually what we are doing is we are trying to protect sensitive data. We are trying to protect information. So all the tools, all the areas, different, different areas of cyber, which you come across, the aim is main. Like we are trying to protect data, but these different domains are actually contributing their part for protecting information. So what's threat hunting? Threat hunting term is not new to us. We know we are identifying threats. Everybody can say that, hey, we are doing threats, we are identifying threats, and we are hunting for them, identifying them, and that's how we work in cyber, we are identifying threats. Okay, that's cool, we, everybody knows. Now, what's the whole concept about threat hunting? Why it is so separate and talked about? So basically in threat hunting, what we are doing is, we are proactively looking for anomalies in our environment. What does that mean? So in the last few years when cyber has grown into a specific named domain in past 20 years when cyber had not emerged as a separate domain it was already part of information technology which is it now how it grown from a diff like how it grown into a separate domain the reason is that earlier we were able to detect threats like we learned as cyber attackers and hackers as they moved on in, in actually, um, I would say successfully accomplishing their goals of either stealing information, doing any kind of compromise. 
as they moved across, like as professionals, as we found them, as we saw, we named them as threats, okay, small threats, big threats, whatever the name we gave it to them. The point here is that when we are identifying threats, these threat actors are becoming equally strong. They are becoming equally advanced. In the past 10 years, we have identified those kinds of advanced threats where attackers were sitting in your network for a longer period of time. And that longer period of time, trust me, it's not just few days or months. They were like close to an year. And this was the startling point from where we try to identify that even though we are implementing skills, like we are implementing different tools like vulnerability assessment, we were into identity access management, we were into uh, application security, network security, cloud security. Okay, every domain has its own place. Now, why threat hunting has become so important in the past five, six, or eight years? Because in threat hunting, we are act we are not actively, we are proactively looking for threats in our environment. We are trying to think from an attacker's point of view or a hacker's point of view. Okay. And what we are doing here is now when we know they have grown advanced in their techniques, we have to become one step ahead of them until or unless we are like we are not one step ahead of them we will be always finding them like like you will be always detecting them when they have already compromised like in the last few years we have heard about threats like we heart bleed uh wanna cry ransomware is nothing new everybody has heard about wanna cry ransomware so what actually happened why somehow in all these attacks we were not able to identify threat actors and how they were performing these attacks. In some situations, we were ignoring. Maybe we can say that we were not protecting our environment properly, but in some situations where advanced persistent threats like APT1 zero day attacks. So APTs are known as advanced persistent threats where attackers are dwelling and living in your environment for a very long period of time. So how can we just protect our organization by being reactive that we find something we are finding some compromise we are finding some indicators of compromises and then we are taking some action we identify something and then we are taking actions so how we can be strong enough to protect our organization just after just be like after just using tools and becoming reactive only so we come up with the technique of cyber threat hunting where we are not only implementing reactive areas of security we are using some proactive methodologies and tools in order to become more efficient or i would say for example if uh, if we consider stages of attack so if like is it not easy like it's is is it not good if we detect some attack or threat uh, at a very early stage, then at a stage when we have already found that some part of our internal network has already been compromised. So all in all, the aim, the, the main aim of threat hunting is to, first of all, exped expedite our detection process of threats, at the same time, reducing our investigation and forensics cost. So what we are doing is we are trying to identify threats at a very initial stage or as soon as possible so that we are not only detecting them before time, but also we are taking necessary steps immediately so that we have minimal business disruption. Now, when coming to dwell time, this dwell time is actually calculated as the number of days an attacker is present in a network before they are detected. So, according to FireEye Mandiant, so FireEye is a cybersecurity solutions provider organization. They they are provide they provide solutions for like proactively detecting threats and mitigating them. So they every year they come up with a Mandiant report which talks about this dwell time. So in 2011, the dwell time for an attacker inside a network was 416 days. And now, after implementing some of the proactive cyber threat hunting skills, we have reduced that dwell time to 56 days. So, 
see it's not about like eliminating everything which can be possible it's about like at a situation how first we can improve ourselves so cyber threat hunting is about continuously improving ourselves it's like a loop where we are continuously trying to improve ourselves from the current position to reach to a situation where we are smarter than the attackers so this is like a basics and like background about why threat hunting uh, what's the basic definition why it came up now let's move on to the methodology of OODA loop so first of all OODA loop is one of the proactive techno like proactive practical methodologies which can be or which should be and a lot of organizations are implementing them in their day-to-day -day routine so basically how it came up what what's actually this term OODA loop so OODA loop was developed by United States Air Force Colonel John Boyd, okay, and they were at a military, uh, I would say military operations at that time. And why did he came up with came up with this uh, terminology of OODA loop? Why? So OODA loop is like a proactive strategy where according to your current situation, you are taking some necessary actions which are not only immediate, but they are effective also. So, for example, when you are in a battlefield and your enemy is in like is in the opposite, you're fighting. So you don't have you do not have time to actually think about the possible solutions and decisions. You have very less time to come up with good techniques, implement them, and at the same time making sure they are effective in your direction. Okay, so whatever techniques, whatever uh, I would say implementation in a battlefield, like, for example, if we are in a battlefield, okay, and we know what are the possible weaknesses of our enemy and suddenly we are in a situation where we can immediately identify what immediate actions we could we should take so that we are in a win win situation. So, basically, this OODA loop came from military operation strategy where militants, they have minimum time to take good decisions and as well as implement them. So why OODA loop is being used in case of threat, uh, cyber threat hunting? Because in threat hunting, again, we are in an attack situation, though that is not a physical attack and we do not have an enemy, but attacker is our enemy, okay? If they are trying to attack our organization, they are trying to compromise our information, steal our the sensitive information, they are enemies. So if we identify, okay, so the very important thing for us in case of our pro, in case of our organization is that if we are trying to protect our organization, it becomes important for us to identify attackers in a very less period of time at the very initial stage. When the attackers are in the very initial stage of attack, it becomes really important for us to identify them and not only identify them and take necessary actions against them, like whatever possible remediations we can take, removal we can take, investigations we have to do if we identify something. So how do how to do that in a very short period of time? Because if somebody is in your network, okay, if you find any anomaly in your network, how would you take immediate actions? So OODA loop actually helps you take necessary actions, right actions and effective actions in a very short duration of time. So the very first stage of OODA loop is observe. So basically, if I like, sorry, let me go back. So the full form of OODA loop is observe, orient, decide and act. Okay. So observe, orient, decide, act will flow in a way like, for example, you observe something, okay, through any alerts or through your real, like uh, in cyber, we use some real-time monitoring tools and SIM, which is uh, security information and even management is one of the uh, domain of cyber in which we are performing some real-time monitoring, analysis, investigations, okay, or same is with your IDS, IPS tools, like real-time alerting and stuff. So basically, in the observe stage, we are trying to observe something in our environment. In orient stage, we are trying to like we are trying to make our position in our direction where we we are now investigating. And decide means like finally the stage when we have observed something, oriented ourselves, we are taking some necessary decisions and acting upon them. So let's discuss them one by one. Like what are the things? What are the possible tools involved in each stage? So. 
in the observe stage, what we are doing, we are continuously detecting changes around us. So, for example, if we are using a SIM tool, okay, and basically in a SIM tool, what we do is we are collecting logs from all possible sources, like possible sources, which is your assets in your organization, which are important to us from security point of view. Okay, so what does that mean? So, basically, logs are like real time records, which are generated in systems in network devices and stuff. And why we, why we are using like the SIM methodology, because. Uh, using SIM tools, we can perform some real time monitoring on our data. Okay, on uh, sorry, on our environment using log data, and then we have like IDS IPS tools. We have vulnerability assessment tools to assess real time vulnerabilities in our environment. Okay, so now in case of the observe phase, what we are trying to do, we are making sure that our tools, okay are configured properly okay alerts are set up in our tools we are doing proper uh, we are doing like for monitoring we have everything in place so for example in case of sim tool we have collected all the required logs okay and at the same time we have created necessary alerts we have create we have incorporated necessary functionalities in our sim tool for real time monitoring same is with your ids ips and vulnerability assessment tools where you are making making sure for see the important thing is in order to observe something in your environment through your cybersecurity tools first of all we need to configure them in a right way in order to observe them you should be getting right kind of log data you should be setting up some right kind of alerts so that in a real time environment you are continuously monitoring changes what's happening in my network what's happening in my applications what's happening in my various network devices and systems how certain users are performing what's their use for example what kind of email a, a person is downloading what action is being done on that email is it a phishing email so all these activities are tracked through to like through these tools so we are in real world observing malicious activities or abnormalities in our network through these tools so the very first step of OODA loop is to continuously detect changes around us now next step in OODA loop is to orient for example in your network you found a packet which which like okay let's let's see a let's see a situation where in your network you found that a user downloaded a file and after that in that particular user system through logs you identify that a uh, a new executable file is now running okay a new process is running in that particular system eventually just after when they downloaded an email so now you identified something like something is fishy like this person downloaded some email and suddenly a new process is seen in their system which is running which is looking as a normal process in our like windows operate like in any operating system like we have some of the processes which are by default running in our operating systems but they look legitimate but somehow it's real a process which usually does not run every day you found out that or to make it more simple for example you saw in your firewall logs that um, a, a, an IP address outside your network is constantly trying to connect with your network and your firewall is denying it. So your firewall is denying it is actually a point where you observe something. Okay. Now in the orientation phase, you are perform like you are making yourself orient in that uh, orient your, you're orienting yourself in that direction because you observe something. Now your focus is going there. Okay. Now at this stage, if you see a particular IP address trying to reach your network and is being denied by the firewall, then you start investigating on that particular IP address. So for that purpose, you would be doing some security research. You would be using some open source threat intelligence tool, and you will be performing analysis and investigation here. Like, what is this IP address? Is it blacklisted? Does this IP address is a is a bot? It's it's like it's a bot or it's a com, uh, command and control IP address. So what is it? So then you start to evaluate what's happening in your real time situation. So now from your observation, you have oriented yourself. Once you have oriented yourself and uh, after an investigation, you found out like, no, this IP address is wrong. It can be malicious and we should take some necessary actions. Now, when, in all, like, when you are in a situation of deciding, okay, now, decision is that part where when if any security incident happens in your organization 
and you know like in your investigation part like in your orientation part you have done all the investigation you have found out the uh, root cause like how a particular security incident happened and once after the investigation now you have to take some decision decision and this decision here would be what should be our plan of remediation okay so if some systems are affected by an attack or they are in a situation where they can be affected by an attack what should we do should we remove those systems from those networks if we need to keep some information and definitely in most of the situation it's recommended do not switch off or plug off those systems so then what should we do what should be the necessary action should we place some honeypot should we segregate them from our network and at this particular time we have to look at our organization's policies and procedures okay so we have to be aligned with all the documentations policies and procedures so that any action which we are taking in response to a uh, attack situation it should not be i would say uh, it should not be anything which is illegal and we should be taking all the right steps so that there is uh, minimal business uh, disruption also at this point we uh, we like we are in a situation we are consulting like if we have consultants in our organization so meetings happen we come up with a remediation plan incident response team they they come into picture at this particular situation that uh, when we have like either we have an in house incident response team or we uh, actually hire some third party uh, companies for performing incident response so like do we have an incident response team in picture uh, do we have an incident response checklist uh, do we have everything ready in order to take action against this particular security incident so all this is done at the stage of the decision which is decide now our last stage of act what does act mean so now after all the analysis which we have done in the orientation stage and when we come up to the decision so decisions uh, involves a lot of actions like according to company every organization is different and every organization might be affected by a security attack in a different way and all organize like different organizations have different standards and procedures which they follow so based on that when they come up with a remediation plan now incident response team okay so in, they are acting on it okay so what does we do uh, what do we do at this stage first of all who like what whatever systems were impacted by certain attack we bring the we bring uh, we bring them back to a normal functioning what does that mean for example if any malicious software was installed in certain and systems so we'll clean them okay if we found out that during our investigation in our audience phase if some of our systems needed any kind of upgradation we will be uh, doing an upgradation here as well so acting is when we are completely removing our uh, uh, attacks like attack like threat uh, um, any like it, it's like whatever uh, in whatever way okay uh, our systems have been impacted through any malicious files okay if certain ports were open then we need to close certain ports through which attack was happening so basically in your orientation phase what you are doing is you are trying to identify investigate and find out that first of all what is the attack from where it is coming from where it is started in decision phase you decide you decide on what necessary actions we can take and in the act stage whatever decisions you have taken you do you actually implement on them so basically if you found out in your investigation that certain port, ports were open due to them some remote code execution was being done or somebody installed a phishing mail so some malicious file was being installed so whatever was impacting we we will undo everything okay so we will be cleaning our system closing some ports permanently then um then after that we'll be making sure that um, uh, these systems are working back normal so we'll we'll perform a validation also so in validation we'll be performing vulnerability assessment again for example if we took some necessary steps in order to uh, remediate an attack so in the action stage uh, we perform vulnerability scanning again here so to check that whatever uh, we have done to make our system secure affected system secures do they still have some vulnerabilities are we missing something is there any gap so we identify them and the action stage perform all the validations cleaning 
this is the stage where we do some kind of lessons learned. Like, for example, once we have come out of an incident, then we have several meetings, meetings with the team where we identify what was the gap. Do we have sufficient security controls? Do we need to create some additional alerts in our, in our some real time tools? Okay, what kind of alerts should be there? What was the gap? Do we need more professionals in our team? So these are the lessons learned. Then sec creating security trainings and awareness. So for example, if certain insecurity incident happened due to neg negligence or lack of awareness of certain employee, then it becomes nowadays very important to train your employees about common threats so that they identify. For example, if they receive a phishing mail, they would be able to identify it. They will not open such mails. So that becomes an important part. So basically, OODA loop is like a continuous learning loop. Okay. So whatever you have learned here, okay. So whatever you have learned in this whole process of remediating an incident, you kind of improve yourself. Like, what are the things that we should not be doing from the next time? Do we need to increase our budget? Do we need to uh, get some more tools? Like what are the ways in order to protect our internal network more? Uh, should, we in, should we be implementing some kind of active defenses like installing honeypots, using some defenses where we are uh, installing honey active directories? So what, what are the techniques we can use for the next time to identify these kinds of threats which we have just go, gone through uh, in a very initial stage and we are not again the same victim of it so this is the act stage so basically as i mentioned ooda loops helps us in uh, in kind of building a continuous intelligence pro like a continuous intelligence to our security uh, program so here see when we say threat hunting we are basically focusing on three areas okay so first of all first of all if we are proactive trying to identify threats in our environment okay so first of all three things are very important situational awareness how much you know your organ like how much you know uh, the environment of your organization and it's a, it's not about no it's about uh, knowing because every day changes are occurring in our environment so we should be uh, it's like we should be updated with the situational changes okay then threat hunting again is based on knowledge Okay, so if I say we are trying to proactively detect threats, somehow we are taking some advanced knowledge. Professionals who are in the domain of cyber threat hunting, they are continuously in the process of learning about more advanced threats. They are trying to think from the point of view, what can be the possible tactic techniques and procedures which can be used by threat actors in the coming future? This is one thing. Second thing is like currently we have observed nonprofit organizations like MITRE ATT&CK ORG, which is the uh, nonprofit organization which focus on identifying tactic techniques and procedures of some advanced level threats, which are known as APTs. Now, how we like how we can leverage these kinds of areas like these organizations and information provided by them. Definitely, if a certain organization, which is similar to your organization or certain threats, which can, which are common to uh, all types of organizations. So basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to identify tactics, techniques and procedures about the latest advanced threats based on those tactics. Uh, those on those techniques and procedures followed followed by the attackers we are trying to identify those patterns in our environment in our in our logs so basically what we are not able to do from our real time tools using our knowledge using our situational awareness and plus using automation automation and analytics it's very much important but like it it's very much important from the point of view of detection so machine learning algorithms then uh, including automation tools like we currently we have security um, orchestration automation and response tools so for example how these tools are helping they are trying to reduce a lot of manual effort so if something has been alerted in these sim tools so in like logs and alerts they basically they are sent out to these so tools these so tools are taking some necessary actions on investigating them so basically a lot of your manual effort is being uh, i would say saved by using some automation and machine learning algorithms where we train like for example if you are using some machine learning uh, algorithms i would say 
uh, there are platforms like in Splunk, we have Splunk UBA. So once you start using these tools in integration with your SIM tools, so what you're trying to do, so, and what OODA loop is trying to tell you that in order to be proactive, okay, in your approach of identifying threats, so what, what things you can include in your ob, uh, observe, orient, decide and act stage. For example, in the observe stage, how you can uh, include tools for real time monitoring. In orientation stage, how you can include uh, open source threat intelligence platforms, how you can integrate them with your existing tools to help you identify threat patterns more easily. Then in your decision stage, what can be the possible best decisions we can take based on the nature of the organizations and the environment of the organization. Plus, again, in your orientation uh, stage, using some automation tools, which can pro provide, I, I'm not saying that automation tools will give you all the kind of analysis. Like, for example, if we are investigating, if we are analyzing a threat using automation, automated tools, and they would be providing us 100% result. No, that's not possible for small threats. They can do that, but for complex threats, they will actually perform a job for you like for example if you're doing 100 percent of work in invest in an in like kind of in investigating threats and analyzing them 50 percent work would be done by these so tools for example if a alert has been generated uh for a firewall denial okay so for if a firewall is denying a packet for more than five times an alert is generated that is being sent to a so tool so that so tool will first of all identify what's the ip address on its own a lot of your manual effort can be uh, i would say reduced by using so tools where we can write some workflows automated workflows and we can implement orchestration where a lot of manual efforts which you have to do in person like finding out what's an ip address is doing and uh, some generic info like some generic information analysis, which which we which we perform on logs as part of manual analysis, can be done by automation. And at the same time, these automation tools can help you raise some automatic tickets, like service now tickets, if you want to raise some tickets, and those tickets would be assigned to the incident response team for further action. So a lot of your work can be reduced by using machine learning algorithms and automated tools. And OODA loop is actually actually telling you to do that. Like in first stage, how to be more fast in detecting threats, like in observing them, what changes we can make in our environment. So after acting upon a security incident, where I mentioned, where we discuss about the lesson learned and where we talk about the gaps. So maybe the gaps can be that the organization didn't implemented, uh, didn't implement automation yet. So now they would be thinking to implement some kind of uh, security orchestration and uh, response tools. Then, inc then include then after that, including some machine learning algorithms in detection of some advanced threats using deep learning. So all that can be done with the help of the uh, uh, practical methodology of OODA loop. So we are um, done with the session. So if you have any questions, so definitely you can ask now. You can reach out to me on my Gmail ID. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, do you guys have any questions? No questions? Oh. Okay, I actually posted the Discord inbox if you guys want to join. It is in the chat. And uh, I'll thank you very much for uh, attending this meeting. We uh, This meeting will be uh, uploaded to our YouTube channel. Go oh, ahead. somebody has a, we have a question. Okay, what are some steps? Uh, what are some tools steps I can take if I notice a domain errors? Same odd. Okay, so we can use some open source threat intelligence tools, which have some by default list of IP address, which are malicious. And uh, for domain names, for example, we have a tool known as a website like software, which is known as virus total. We can identify some malicious URL hashes using virus total. Can you suggest a few ways to stay current on the latest threats being used by attackers? So definitely you can ref like there are uh, many, uh, I would say, 
um, companies like I, I just forget some some of the names which are very consistent in providing cyber news about various kinds of attacks. And again, LinkedIn is a good way. Like if you are connected to all the cyber professionals and you connect with them on LinkedIn. So that's the uh, stage. Like that's the point where a lot of us are sharing news. Like the latest I saw was an uh, ransomware attack on a coffee machine. So that that was very weird and that was very insightful. So I can share like some of the news articles which are like with, which are definitely writing on cyber only. I can share that on LinkedIn. So and on Discord as well. So I will do that. And Dave has a question that what is the difference between Orient and Decide? So Dave, actually in Orient, see if you identify some abnormal pattern, it can be a net. Uh, it can be an abnormal network traffic. It can be some kind of anomaly in your uh, application, or it can be some kind of anomaly in your system through logs. So if you identify something abnormal, then it's like, or like in the observation phase, basically what we are trying to do is we are first trying to identify if something is wrong, right or wrong. Okay. Then once you observe something, then you go to the orientations. Orient means you are like you're actually moving your direction. Okay, you're directing yourself in in that particular uh, direction. Okay, so it's like once you observe something, now you are looking into that direction into more detail. So orient means where if you find something abnormal, then you try to uh, dig deep down, basically investigate. Now in the investigation phase, we would be including threat uh, like threat intelligence platforms so for example if i if i think a particular a particular log has some kind of malicious url or a file hash or an ip address so definitely here at this stage i would be doing a deep dive investigation in order to find out if whatever i have observed and i'm thinking is right or wrong okay so investigation is not only about finding out what are the root causes of an attack but always to find out if it is a false positive if it's a false uh, uh, false uh, it's a false positive or not so false positive means if if some uh, alert or some of your observation you think you identify is malicious or if you feel that it's it can be related to a cybersecurity incident or it can be an initial stage of an attack where you just observe it and you you are using your intuition and your knowledge, your situational awareness about the environment of your organization, you observe something and in the orientation phase, you are performing deep dive investigation. So that's orientation and in decision, once you have identified what's happening, then you take necessary decision like each organization, as I mentioned, is different. So what's the best decision plan for you? Okay, what should we do with the systems which are already been affected? Should we remove them? Should we clean them? What can, what are the possible situation of according like what's our, what are what's our current situation? Okay, if we are in a uh, in a situation of attack, so what are the possible actions we can take? What's the road to be taken, which is not only best for remediation but for the company's reputation and business as well? So that's the decision part. Yeah, I do have some books with me as well on cyber threat hunting guide, so I can share oh. that as well. Okay, so is it correct to say that Orient is focused observation? See, orientation. See, orientation is based on observation. It is depending uh, dependent on observation. If you are not configuring your tools properly for monitoring, definitely your orientation can also be wrong. Okay, you can be missing something, but you can be guessing something right as well. So basically the major, I would say the major stage where we have to be very cautious is the observation stage. It all depends on our observation. If we are configuring our tools, right? Then definitely our observation will like our observation will be right and our orientation will also be right. So orientation is like a direction which we take. If you like, for example, if in a sky, you're looking for a bird, okay, and you and you start observing it and then you orient yourself in the direction of the birds movement. So it's like that. I was also going to say that we do have a thread Intel channel in a discord and a slack and uh, it's basically like a crowdsource. Um, a channel where members post things that they believe they're relevant. 
Any other questions? Same to you, Kevin. Yeah, I can. Um, is there any other questions? Um, well, thank you very much. This meeting uh, was recorded and it will be posted in our channel. Uh, remember to subscribe to our meetup so you know what's coming up next. Uh, I place the invite if you want to keep in touch for events, tools, jobs, um, conferences, you name it. We got all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, so, again, thank you, uh, Asta, for, for the time and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much. Thank you all.